I have the pleasure to greet you here this morning. We are uh, going to hear a lecture uh, by Associate Professor Mikhail Pimonenko of St. Petersburg State Transport University. Uh, meanwhile, Professor Pimonenko is also uh, acting manager and director of Northwest Russia Logistics Development Center, ILOT. Uh, the lecture you are about to listen is about logistics. So logistics <laughs> yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And uh, Professor Pimonenko is going to give this lecture from the point of view of St. Petersburg. And also from the viewpoint of Northwest Russia, and hopefully also about the challenges that cooperation and collaboration between St. Petersburg, Northwest Russia, and uh, Estonia and Latvia would have. According to the plan, uh, there are six vocational schools in Estonia that have got information about this lecture, and hopefully they will see us also as it is part of the Estonia, Latvia, Russia, CBC program and Logon train project within that program, uh, we, there is also a compulsory video that we are going to see. So let's start from this video. Doing things together creates partnerships. Estonia, Latvia, Russia cross-border cooperation program within ENPI opens new possibilities for life in the border area. Estonia, Latvia, Russia, united by borders. And so, Professor Pimarenko, <coughs> the floor is yours. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Rainer. You was very polite to invite me here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am very pleased to see such a, a young and uh, interested audience interested in logistics, I mean. Uh, you see that uh, my lecture, the title of my lecture, Logistics Yesterday, Today, Tomorrow, as you understand, it is not very serious because on this item can be written a very, very big book or manual concerning what logistic was yesterday, what is it today, and tomorrow. Uh, first of all, I must apologize that uh, some slides uh, in my lecture would be in Russian, because having no uh, much time, uh, it was impossible. Uh, different materials were taken from different sources, and I hadn't enough time to, for example, to rearrange these slides in English. But uh, the most part and the biggest part of my lecture uh, and slides of my lecture, it is uh, in English. Uh, you see that any lecture, when he prepares uh, to read something, to tell something, to discuss something with audience, he takes into account, uh, first of all, the level of preparing of the audience. That's why I have intention to, excuse me, this, yes, okay, this. Uh, this uh, that's why uh, I would like to show you the content of my lecture. And first of all, it is introduction, what is logistics? Uh, so, uh, in order not uh, <clears throat> you lose your uh, patience in the lecture, my first question. Can anybody of you tell me what logistic is, by your own words, not 
for example, something from the text, from books, from manuals. What do you think? What logistics is? Be so kind. It starts from customer satisfaction and the same customer. Mm -hmm. it's all customer. Excuse me. It all starts from customer and it all ends with customer satisfaction. It's yes. all for customers. Yes. You are right. Maybe you can uh, to add something, anybody? Don't hesitate. Please. Okay. Now I'll show you what logistics is. Logistics is, first of all, it is practical management. And practical management for what? For what? You told about it. For what? Uh, for no management. What object? With what has logistics deal with? No transport. The most vital and key, key, key definition for logistics. No. No, a little later. And science, because you see, according to development of practical logistics, it's appeared a different methods, a different models in order to make logistics efficient, to reduce costs of transportation, of delivering goods and cargo from the first stage of its appearance till the last customer about which you told us. But the object of logistics and practical management, it is flows. And I can show you the last version of uh, definition and description what is the main objects of logistics. First of all, you must have in mind that it is flows, flows first of all of materials. And we can divide it on main flows of first type and main flows of second type. Main flows of first type, it is materials, raw materials, components, products, services. And services also can be divided into two groups, uh, as I'll show to you a little later in the uh, next, uh, for example, presentation of these uh, services. First of all, first group, it is those services which are connected with technical and equipment which you sell to your customer. That, yes, you must accompany by these services this technique. The main flow of second type, it is human resources. It is passengers, and logistics also have to deal with passengers, personal, tourists, and others maybe resources. And attendant flows, which we cannot for example, exclude from the whole process of logistics. It is flows of information and financial flows. And it's appeared uh, the second group of services. It is for, for services for logistic operations and for logistic functions. For example, it is returning of different packages from selling or in the uh, shops and from selling in your uh, in retail sales, uh, for example, returning package uh, back to the manufacturers. It is also services like a logistic operation. It is a service of second group. For most, for the best functioning of logistics, any logistic system, and you know that logistic system, it is, the, uh, it is um, some of uh, components, some of operations, some of functions which you use and which you, from which you make this uh, logistic system. And this logistic, any logistic system for it e efficient functioning must have to, um, uh, requires, must uh, fit to requires of it is named 6R. What is it right? Right cargo. What is it R? Right cargo, right quantity, right quality, right costs and right time at right place. It is the main, the main requirement of the system of logistics uh, in order it will function uh, in an efficient way and will bring you uh, profitability in your uh, operations. And sometimes... Sometimes you can ask, but you see logistics, it is uh, part of marketing or uh, vice versa. Some specialist uh, 
have in mind that, for example, marketing, it is a part of logistics. And I want to show you that between marketing and the logistics, it is a real difference. And this difference can be illustrated by this uh, slide. F uh, for, uh, for marketing, uh, this uh, last word, it is covered by the uh, computer uh, icon, uh, it is place, the fourth P. Uh, for marketing, it is uh, <clears throat> well known such a rule for P. It is price, because specialists in marketing, first of all, they take care about the price. Then they take care about the products for co consumers, for requirements of consumers. Then they are busy by promotion of these products at any place or the place it is markets. But for logistics, it is the rule of 7R. And you see only in one part they are, uh, can be uh, compared. It is right place. You must deliver your product in the right place, as i shown you uh, in the upper uh, slide. Now the second, uh, the second part or the second uh, the second part of uh, the lecture, it is logistics, performance index, and how we are evaluated. You see that uh, logistics in different countries uh, is developed on different levels, has developed uh, on different levels. And you see that uh, several years ago, uh, by the money of European Bank of Reconstruction and then Development, it was such a scientific or research work. Uh, the leader of this work was Turku University of Economics. And they made such a uh, research in 150 countries. And they asked companies, they asked uh, enterprises who worked in different countries, and they asked uh, concerning development of logistics according to several criteria. These criteria, seven criteria are, it is, first of all, customs procedures. Don't interfere that it is customer. You understand? Customs, it is customs, not customer. Then it is how it is developed infrastructure in this country and how this infrastructure can help in logistic operations, in logistics activity. Uh, then it is international shipment. It is international form of documents and how in this country these documents are used. Then it is logistic competence. It is skills of staff or skills of persons who are busy by logistics. Then it is tracing and tracking, possibility of receiving information of your cargo at any moment of its transportation or maybe, uh, for example, inventory where it is on terminal or on ship or on train and so on. It is possibility to have at any time information about your cargo. Then it is costs of domestic logistics. Uh, you see that prices, costs are very important at, uh, for any activity, for any, uh, for example, actions. And then it is time, timeliness. It is losing of time of different operation. It is waiting, it is losing, it is a lot of bureaucracy, and so on and so on. And uh, as a result, it it's appeared <coughs> such a ra ranking table, which is named the global... Logistic Perception Index. And uh, it is results of 2007 year. After, after this, it is appeared the second edition of this research. It was on 2010. And it seems to me that in January of, two, of 2013, it's appeared the third one uh, edition. But here it is the table of the uh, 2007 year. You see, on the first place, Singapore. Second, Netherlands, and so on and so on. For example, Finland on 15th place. Uh, more illustrative would be the next slide. You see it is a little map. For example, Estonia, 47th place in this ranking. Uh, Latvia, 42 place in this ranking. And Lithuania, 58. Russia, 99. Uh, I can... Uh, <coughs> I can say to you rather good uh, information, rather good news, that in the uh, research of 2010, 
Russia occupied 95 places. So the logistics in Russia had grown a little better, had become a little better, and uh, we now occupied uh, 95 places. Uh, you see that there are uh, real uh, reasons why uh, logistics in Russia have such a low uh, ranking in the uh, world uh, scale. First of all, very big distances. You can understand, yes, big distances. But if you compare, for example, European part of Russia with European, uh, with Europe and whole, it is, they are, can be uh, compared because the distance is not so long and so on. Uh, the, main, uh, the main reason, firstly, uh, why Russia at such uh, low place in ranking, uh, in ranking, world rank, it is work of customs. Because our Russian customs, first of all, see its uh, goal, its aim, it is duties and fees. Not development of uh, international trade, not development, for example, of uh, uh, business, not development of, uh, first of all, it is uh, fees and duties, and uh, they must be gathered, because you see that customs uh, volume, uh, total volume of customs fees and duties, it is nearly one-third of our uh, country budget. Yeah, you can understand this. Next item, uh, oh, at all. And you see, this is illustration, uh, one of the illustrations which shows why logistics so important for every one, for every citizen, for every man, for every human being. Why? Because you see, in any, in, in price of any good, of any, anything you buy anywhere, in the price of this thing can be included, such a share of transport and logistics. What the cost of transport and logistics included in this price of any uh, thing you can buy, for example, in a shop or anywhere else. And you see that also if you compare Russia and the European <coughs> Union concerning the, uh, the share of transportation and uh, logistics in this uh, price, average. In Europe, it is 13 percentage. In Russia, it is 27 percentage. And uh, you see that nearly two and a little more times greater uh, in Russia than in uh, developed European countries. Food, 18, 54 percentages, if you can compare. So you see uh, that in prices in Russia, a very big part is uh, busy or it's occupied uh, by the share of transport and logistic costs. Uh, now, I'll, uh, due to time, you asked me to make only hour. Yeah, I missed some uh, slides. So. so, the next item, very important, it is transport and logistic market. First of all, it is market at all, the world market of, tra of transport and logistics. Uh, you see that uh, there are shown by the years from 2008 uh, till 2010, you see transportation, logistics, this is transportation, blue color. Uh, a little darker blue color, it is uh, logistic uh, management. And you see that proportion between uh, uh, transportation, uh, complex logistics, and management logistics, it's uh, nearly white uh, color in this uh, slide. It a little change. You see that it is growth of the share of management logistics and complex logistics, and part of transportation drops from year to year. It means that logistics had become more complicated, more difficult, and that management uh, spent more money, more skills, more knowledge, more, uh, for example, even uh, money for arrangement and for uh, arrangement and creation of uh, proper um, uh, operations and procedure of logistics. In Russia, you see translogistic market. It consists of, uh, you see, for example, cargo transportation. It is the uh, lower, uh, such a perlipipids. Then freight forwarding. Then it is warehousing and distribution and logistic management. And you see that proportion between two uh, points in the time, 
two dates, it is 2007 and 2015 it is expected, you see that uh, it is in, million, in, milliard, in billions of dollars, and you see that cargo transportation growth is very big, and uh, also all, in all branches of activities in logistics, we can show the growth from 2007 to 2015. Ports. Several words about development of ports in Russia. Why I asked uh, and made such a um, uh, title for this item? Infra uh, ports. Is it infrastructure points of value-adding manufacturer? You see that uh, current situation uh, shows that not all ports are interested and not all ports are developed in such a way to organize on their areas, on their territories, possibilities for manufacturing, for creation of situation when many branches or fields of activities can bring value adding or creation of, value, of adding value, in, another, in in other words. And you see that, uh, for example, in European documents, you can find that there are many requirements to make uh, earlier or later the ports real value-adding manufacturers, like, for example, it is in the port of Rotterdam in, in, Netherlands, in Netherlands. You see that will the world cargo transportation between different modes of transport is divided in such a way. Uh, for example, till now, the whole or total volume of cargo transportation in international trade, it reached nearly uh, 14 or nearly uh, 15 billion, billion tons. And it is divided between different, it's, uh, this transportation is divided between different uh, modes of transport in the uh, next uh, way. Uh, you see C. 65 percentage, and you see that sea transport is very important for uh, international transportation because it is the only transport, except air, but except air is very expensive transport, uh, which can connect continents, which can connect countries, for example, uh, in different uh, parts of, the, of our world are situated, between Asia, for example, America, Australia, uh, for example, Europe, and so on. Railway, 25 percentage, road, 8, 9 percentage, inland water, 4, 5 percentage, and air, 1, 2 percentage. The, main attractiveness of air transport, it is transportation of very expensive cargo, of very ex expensive things, because it is very high security and safety in air transport. That's why, for example, diamonds are carried in the world only by air transport. And uh, some uh, treasures, some treasures, treasure metals, for example, gold, platinum, and also uh, uh, try, uh, mostly are carried by uh, air transport. Uh, this is a very interesting slide I wanted to show you in order to compare the, first of all, prices and costs in different modes of transport uh, through the uh, fuel consumption, because you see uh, that, uh, first of all, uh, it is price of transportation or costs of transportation. And from the other hand, it is a requirement of uh, authorities of Europe transport authorities uh, to uh, environmental uh, includes of different transport modes in the environmental situation. And you see, for example, on uh, this Fuel consumption of this slide is shown in megajoules per tonne per tonne and kilometer. You understand? Yes, tonne kilometer of cargo and uh, in, in uh, megajoules, not in uh, any volume uh, units. Uh, how, for example, kilograms or liters or gallons or <coughs> some, something else. Why in megajoules? Because you know that any fuel have its uh, such a uh, warm ability, <laughs> warm ability. Uh, when it's fights, uh, any fuel uh, can, give, um, can, can give us warm ability in these units, megajoules. And you see for water transport, it is only 0.46. 0.66 and, and 1.61. 1 
you see that the for road or uh, automobile uh, transport consumption of fuel on the same unit of transportation nearly three and a half times greater. And you see that include in carbon gas of uh, automobile transport, you see very high. And now it is uh, different specialists um, uh, have an opinion that nearly 80 percentage of uh, carbon gas which uh, we have in uh, our <clears throat> world, it is due to this automobile transport. So the shift of mode from automobile transport to sea or to railway where consumption of fuel less, it is one of the tasks on future of our, in logistics and transportation. A few words, um, a few words about, sorry. A few words about uh, uh, about Russian ports. You see uh, that Russian ports. Uh, excuse me, please. I'll find. Yes. Okay. Back. Uh, the Russian ports. Uh, I didn't translate uh, the name of these ports in Russian, but uh, in English. Uh, but you see that I show belonging of every port to any sea, in order to understand you where they are located. Uh, the biggest ports in Russia. At all, we have 86 ports and 22 port points in our country, and uh, its location mostly Saint Petersburg. It's the biggest port. Uh, it's uh, cover nearly 44 percentage of international trade cargo. Uh, then Murmansk, uh, no, you know that St. Petersburg on the Baltic Sea, like Estonia also in the Baltic Sea, like Tallinn, like Silamea, it is the ports of Baltic Sea. Murmansk, it is Barents Sea, it is the north of Russia, north of Russia. Arkhangelsk, it is White Sea. Astrakhань, it is Caspian Sea. Novorossiysk and Tuapse, it is Black Sea. Vostochny Nakhodka, Vladivostok, Vanina, it is the ports of our Russian Far East. <coughs> Next slide, it is uh, <coughs> illustration that now it's appeared very great uh, attention. Uh, and very great interest, not, in, not only in Russia, but also in different countries, for example, European countries, to the North Sea Way. It is through the North Ledoviti Ocean, as you know, North Ocean. And you see that for northern part of Russia are very important such ports as, as, as Dudinka, Igarka, Tixi, and Pevek. Because you see that uh, for example, you can deliver different cargo on the northern part uh, cities, northern part, uh, for example, villages and so on, only on summer. Because on winter it is very hard ice situation and sometimes you can reach, you cannot reach, for example, places and villages where uh, you have habitants, you have people and you must supply them by food, uh, by different things, by warm things and so on, only uh, during uh, summer period. So uh, North uh, Sea Way was all, always very important. During Soviet times also was very important. Uh, and now attractiveness of this uh, northern, uh, northern Sea Way uh, for European countries. It is, uh, first of all, due to um, possibility of transportation from uh, Southeast Asia to Europe by Northern Way. And uh, in the recent three years, it was two or th three, maybe three pilot caravans with, uh, which were uh, with icebreakers uh, were uh, lead from Japan to Europe. Uh, due to small depth in the uh, aquatoria, aqua territory, the aqua area in the ports, uh, only 60 percentage of Russian ports can accept vessels of uh, rather high uh, dead weight. Uh, that's why. Moreover, the uh, existing our ports of Russia, then Keikawa, only 54 percentage of Russian needs in uh, international trade. That's why <coughs> the rest export and import cargo uh, is handled by Baltic states, uh, Ukrainian, Georgia, and Azerbaijan ports. 
Development. It is the future of Russian ports. First of all, it is the reconstruction of Vostochny port. It is on the far east. Modernization of Murmansk and Arkhangelsk port. Uh, constructed port Ustluga. It is very important, and about Ustluga, I'll tell you a little later in more details, because it is very interesting port. It attracts attention of different countries located at the shores of Baltic Sea, because it is uh, the point of comp competitiveness between different countries. Uh, that's why about Port Usluga, I'll tell you a little um, in details. And then constructed Port Alia. It is not far from Arkhangelsk, uh, excuse me, from Astrakhan on Caspian, on Caspian Sea. It's appeared Port Alia. Uh, it is uh, in notation, in European notation, it is a corridor, transport corridor, uh, north-south uh, from Finland to Iran and maybe a little further. And uh, you see that our um, very big, it is monopolist company, railway company, uh, RGD, Russian uh, Railways. It is looking for the place on the far east of our country for construction of a new container port because they are very interested to um, occupy, to, for example, to lower the transit. Ustluga few words about Usluga. Here you have a map. Here is Silamaya, you see? Here is our border. You see between, it is border between Estonia and Russia. You can see Silamaya, it is a road to Tallinn. Yes, you see, in order to understand you, the location of, of the Usluga port. You see Usluga port is situated in the place where River Luga is joining the Baltic Sea through the uh, Finnish Gulf. You see, it is Usluga. And a uh, few <coughs> words about what was done. Excuse me, these slides in Russian. It is the scheme of, uh, or general plan of this port, which consists of several terminals. Uh, it is included several, tar uh, several terminals. For example, first, I can show only a few of them, and I, otherwise we will spend a lot of uh, time on, uh, for example, seeing in details of this scheme. For example, appeared firstly on 2-0 first year. It was first terminal in this port. Here it is figure one. Do you see? It is shown by, by cursor. It is shown, yes, on a on a, on a screen. Yes? Okay. Uh, it is complex for coal handling, for coal uh, special coal terminal. Then second, it is universal. Uh, loading, unloading, complex. And the third, very also big, it is complex for uh, technical sulfur. It is a very important uh, product, which may be. After that appeared, uh, it's a little picture of coal terminal. This is a little picture of uh, many functional uh, loading, unloading uh, complex, which is named South 2. And you see, now it is uh, possible to accept a lot of cars there. Here appeared from, from Germany such a car, uh, from Kiel, uh, such a vessel. And uh, a lot of uh, cars can be now um, uh, stored on these uh, areas, on this uh, terminal. It is automobile uh, railway uh, ferry. Uh, which moves to Kaliningrad and to the Europe, you see it is the possibility of uh, handling, of uh, loading different uh, automobiles and railway and so on. And it is the, shown here in the uh, right low uh, corner of this picture, uh, vessel and how it uh, procedure of uh, handling. This is once more beginning of this, uh, it is universal uh, loading. Complex and some appeared container terminal now in Usluga. And uh, one and a half year ago appeared uh, a special terminal for oil, for oil products, a big terminal. And it is connected with a uh, pump uh, line with uh, our uh, Kirishi uh, oil uh, manufacturing plant. 
Now, railway transportation, few words about railway transportation in Russia, but not only in Russia. You see, on this, in this table, you can see comparable figures of different railways from different countries. USA, Russia, China, uh, excuse me for missing uh, letter H, India, Canada, and so on. I, w I, I want to attract your attention only to two figures. Pay attention to two figures. Between USA and Russia, you see roll stock. Roll stock in Russia greater than roll stock in USA. You see? And cargo turnover in billion ton multiplied on kilometers in uh, USA uh, it seems to me on 25 percentage, nearly 25 percentage, much than in Russia. Why? Two reasons. First of all, it is productivity. It is efficiency of work on, a, on, on every place. Efficiency of work, of productivity, you see. Because this is the main measure of development of economics, productivity or efficiency of working. And the second reason, it is more developed logistics, first of all. That's why the different is. And you want, I want to also attract your uh, attention. It is between Russia, for example, and China. You see that uh, length of these railroads in our two countries can be compared. But you see how much greater the length of uh, of railroad with electricity. In Russia, it is half of roads are covered by electricity, and in China, only one quarter, maybe a little more or less. In order to <coughs> create your impression about how long railways in Russia, I made such a slide, you see, it is illustration of transip. Illustration of transip. You see, for example, we start from Yaroslavsky terminal in Moscow, in our capital, in capital of Russia, and move by, by transip. We are moving, 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 we go further, further, further. We have covered more than 4,000 kilometers, but we reached only Krasnoyarsk. You can see? And we must move further, further, further. And to Vladivostok, it is more than 9,000 kilometers. It is only transip. If we compare uh, the railroad of Russia, uh, transip, only transip of Russia, with all railroads of rather developed country, Norway, you see in Norway, it is only 4,170 uh, kilometers. It is only the way from uh, Moscow to uh, Krasnoyarsk, yes, as I, as I shown to you. And on, only 20, uh, 251 kilometers in Norway, they have double, double track. This is development of railway in uh, other country, for example, rather developed country, Norway, for example. You see, they have very developed machinery, for example. If you heard the accident with our submarine Kursk, heard you about it? Yes, uh, the, yes nuclear submarine, you know. All operations by, um, uh, for example, um, dropping from the water. Uh, uh, this submarine, it was technique from Norway. It is Norwegian specialist who uh, saved this uh, submarine from the bottom of the ocean. Further, uh, you see also very interesting uh, figures, very, very interesting uh, comparison, uh, because it is uh, firstly have matter with logistics. You see that Russia have nearly the same route speeds of railway transport like in developed European countries, nearly 45 kilometers per hour. But it is route, you see route speeds. If we, if we for example, for one container, we, we, we shall consider uh, the uh, movement of container for, from the point of uh, starting to the finish point. The average speed will only nine kilometers per hour. 
You see what the difference. If, for example, on transceive we can reach this logistics speed to 21 km per hour, you see that Suez channel would be uncompatible with transceive. And we all countries will try to carry their containers through transit to Europe, then along the Asia and in Suez, through the Suez Channel to the European ports. Also, uh, very interesting uh, figures which uh, are, uh, give us evidence why Russia, for example, not, not so uh, developed in uh, container, uh, in containerization, we can say, in uh, attracting of container technology. I mean, when I say about container technology and about containerization, I mean the uh, using uh, the use of uh, containers of international standards, only two, uh, 20 and 40 uh, foot containers. You see that railway, uh, Rus Russian railway have at all 6,000 stations. And you see among it only 600 or 10 percentage of these stations uh, have uh, possibility to operate with containers. Uh, you see that uh, till Soviet times uh, in Russia were very popular small containers, five tons uh, of loading, three tons of loading, you see. But for international containers, for international standard containers for 20 and 40 uh, TU, uh, it is only 170 stations. They are permitted to work with containers. You see, it is only 3% of all stations in Russia on railways can operate with containers. That's why containerization uh, is not so uh, developed in our uh, country. I'll miss this uh, wholly because we have time not so... This also we will miss. Uh, very interesting also, you see that uh, provision by terminal facilities in comparison with uh, different uh, um, uh, European cities. You see, for example, area in square meters on 1,000 of citizens having in different uh, cities of different countries. Uh, for example, in Russia, St. Petersburg and Moscow. In St. Petersburg, it is only 26 meters, in Moscow 72, in comparison with European cities. You see in Budapest 200, in Praga 470, in Warsaw 620 meters. And uh, more uh, illustrative and more distinct uh, comparison, you see, it is terminals per citizens in comparison with U USA, USA cities. In St. Petersburg, in functioning now, it is square meter on one person. It is uh, 0 0.25. To be constructed, and it will reach in the nearest future uh, 0 0.40. In Moscow, 0 0.5. It is half a meter on one person. In New York, for one person, 10 square meters. And average in cities of USA, three square meters per one person, per one citizen. It is will miss. Now about container, containerization, few words, because it is the main technological, uh, main technological uh, branch, main technological, uh, for example, innovation which must be uh, developed uh, anywhere else, in any territory, in any area, in any country, in any state, uh, in any region. Uh, do you know what is a TEU? T -E -U. What is it? Do you know? Uh, yes, okay. TEU, it is unit for measurement of container flow. It's determination in such a way. One TEU, it is 20 foot equivalent unit. You know that international standard containers, their length is measured in foots, yes? because it was taken American system of measurement. Not metric, but American, the inch. 
so named if you met it in literature in uh, anywhere it is inch system of measurement 20 foot equivalent unit yes a question to you how many TEU 40 foot container two. two you are clever you are well 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 developed okay wonderful you see that not in, in, not in every auditorium I met the correct answer on this question. That's why I, it's, it's a good. And you see, because we are neighbors, we live uh, near um, <clears throat> to each other. You see, I also will give you uh, where it is. Uh, you can meet in Russian literature. One DFE, for example, anywhere you can meet. Uh, it is 20 foot away equivalent also, the first letters of these three words. Now, how appeared? You see, it is uh, in the past, it is yesterday, logistics. How appeared containers at all? The first vessel which began to transport containers appeared in the United States. Of America. It was such a very clever uh, person, Malcolm McLean, who took a general, a common vessel he took, but he reconstructed it a little and appeared such on a uh, high deck of this vessel. It's appeared special constructions for um, uh, putting containers on it. And the first Idol X was the name of this vessel, and it uh, transported from New Jersey, uh, from New York uh, State, New Jersey, to Port Houston, State, Texas, in USA, 58, 35 foot. You can, for example, calculate by yourself, and you can uh, appreciate that it is nearly 100 Theos, TEU. But why he begin to transport by containers the cargo. He evaluated that loading of one ton of cargo on a general, on a common vessel, the cost is $5.83. And if you will load by containers on idle lease on this uh, ship, on this vessel, it is only 0 0.16, only 16 cents. You see? If you calculate, if you have telephone with calculator, you can calculate, you can divide $5 with uh, such a addition. On uh, 16 cents, you, you, you will get 35 times. You see how attractive for any businessman? 25 reduction of costs. It was attractive, that's why containerization had begun to develop very, very, very <coughs> quickly and uh, all over the world. I'll miss this uh, also. Uh, for me, very interesting, this uh, slide, because it is task <coughs> for our future. You see, it is container usage during its li uh, lifespan. Any container live, uh, have a life of its uh, time. Any time. For example, five years. Five years of living of any container, any container in average. Let's consider this five years life of this container. He spent, you see, 16 percentage of this time in ocean transit, 16 percentage of this time on terminals, on stock, or anywhere else, six percentage in land use, on the railways, on automobiles, on by roads, uh, six percentage in repair, and think a little, please. Pay attention. 56 percentage idle or empty reposition. You see, more than half of its life, container is empty. It doesn't carry any cargo. It is empty. One of the tasks of logistics to reduce this time, yes? In order to take in uh, operations in proper way containers and uh, they in order they must be loaded more more time not empty now further in uh, uh, in uh, such a uh, 
uh, quick manner. And now I wanted to, to show you the largest uh, ship in service now. It is exist in Myers company. It is 14,500 containers it carry for a time. You see what a big container. <coughs> That's why appeared the, the, the same, for example, equipment for loading, cranes, and, and so on. Intermodality, it is also one of the uh, main, um, uh, for example, field of activity which must be developed, and uh, so on. Now, future imaginations. Where to attain? You see that Europe now uh, create programs of development uh, of... Uh, uh, transport, of transport European network and data. And key uh, infrastructure parameters which they uh, try to include in these programs. First of all, it is efficiency. Efficiency in any uh, transport, in any mode, and so on. It is environmental requirements or otherwise green logistics. If you heard about it, it's appeared such a term, such a uh, branch in logistics, green logistics, when uh, logistics also uh, <coughs> coincide with the requirements of uh, environmental, <coughs> environmental safety and security. Mobility and interoperability. <coughs> For passenger transport, they <coughs> try to reach uh, very big, uh, very good parameters in speed, in comfortability, in mobility, and easy access for any passenger, for every citizen, in movement between different points, between different areas of our continent, of our countries, of our regions, and so on. And for cargo, it is up-to-date technologies. Otherwise, uh, other words, containerization, about which I've told you, information, it is information technology which uh, are included in all processes of transportation and logistic operations, and communications, environment, shifting of modes, pure fuel. You know that in Europe it will appear in 2015 new, very <coughs> tight requirement to the uh, um, C, uh, C engines fuel uh, <coughs> by the content of sulfur. Very tight. Uh, it is expected that uh, due to this requirement, uh, the costs of sea uh, transportation uh, would be much grow, would grow a little uh, uh, much, and would be compared with railway uh, transportation. Then it is bottlenecks, and at last it is logistics. And uh, to education, high secondary technical for logistics, and very important now for good logistics, it is education vocational. It is this education by which you are now busy in this uh, vocational, uh, vulgar vocational uh, school. Yes, school. Yes. Uh, it is, you see, it is a requirement of European programs. It is our future uh, where we must um, go, where we must attend. And now conclusions. You see, I've told you that we are neighbors, we live in uh, the countries which are uh, located on the shores of uh, Baltic Sea. And uh, for better cross-border cooperation, for better realization of different uh, programs and different uh, projects uh, included in the frames of these uh, programs, we, first of all, must communicate uh, with uh, European uh, network, transport network, infrastructure network, have to good communication. And uh, on the uh, example of Estonia, we see that uh, Estonia now very good constru constructed, included in this, this TNT or European uh, transport network. Then participation in the, re in the realization of international programs and strategies. We must be in, uh, informed what programs are created, what are the key items, what are the key, or what, the, what are the core vision, what are the core uh, aims of these programs, and so on. Closer approach to logistic potentials, to logistic potentials of the region. We must know what terminals you have, what ports, what stations, what distances, what, what companies are working in uh, the market of logistics. It is the, you see the 
volume of knowledge which any logist must know when he operates on his working place. Cooperation of business structure and well-organized transit. It is all the conditions for successful cross-border cooperation. Thank you very much for, for your attention. I uh, finished my <laughs> lecture. Okay, now it seems what it's questions? time for, for questions. Yes. Have we got any questions through, uh, through the internet? No, not yet. Okay, but now questions are hopefully here. <laughs> any questions to, to Professor Pimanenko? Uh, for example, well, I have got one. Yes, okay. You are uh, welcome. Well, uh, you know that there are different railway standards, railway gauge. So the European gauge is 14.35 millimeters, and the Russian gauge is 15.20. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have been using the Russian gauge here, uh, also in Finland and, and some other countries. Perhaps the only the Poland the, uh, has given up Russian gauge waters. and gone over to the mm -hmm. European gauge uh, 14.35. Uh, according to plans, uh, the same, but in English. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, there will mm -hmm. be a high-speed no, railway mm -hmm. called Rail Baltica or Rail Baltic, yes. which is going to be on the European gauge, uh, on the direct line uh, from Tallinn to through Riga and Kaunas to Warsaw. Mm -hmm. uh, well, but uh, then uh, the European gauge will be introduced here. Uh, do you think, well, your opinion now, uh, would it be uh, a right idea to go over here to the European gauge, well, mm -hmm. just to the same mm -hmm. uh, with all the railway in Estonia, or still uh, continue with the Russian gauge, 1520? Uh, <clears throat> before uh, saying my opinion about development of this uh, distinct, this matter, the uh, Rail Baltica Corridor Growth Project, uh, you see uh, I need a little uh, much uh, time in order uh, to discuss the situation with different gauge or gauge. I, I, my, <laughs> my gauge. gauge. Better to, to say gauge, but I had the time to say gauge. You see, uh, I uh, found in my materials uh, such in order to show the audience, you see, the map, you see in the world there are a lot of different gauges, a lot of different gauges. It is a map I, I found in my. You see, the green, it is 1520, about which you say. You see all here, all Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, it is 1520 till now. You see that in Europe it is exist two legislative systems of railway, of railway transportation. One of them, it is CIM, it is European system. It is a system, uh, it is agreement of different, uh, of different uh, states. Uh, and another system, it is uh, SGSM. It is a system which appeared during Soviet times. It was uh, such a Warsaw Agreement. And when you carry cargo or transport cargo from the country which is working in the legislative system SIM to the uh, country which is working in the legislative system as game, you must change document on a border. And changing of documents can be done only by the country which is operating in both systems, you see? And there, are, there is such a such a dismission or misunderstanding. Uh, many people uh, are sure that you must change documents when you change gauge. No, it's different things. It can coincide sometimes, but it is different uh, thing. You can change gauge, uh, gauge but you can, uh, if you move from one country to another with different gauges, but uh, working in the same legislative system, you wouldn't uh, change documents, and vice versa. For example, the one gauge, uh, gauge one, the one gauge, but different systems, you must uh, change documents, but not change gauges. Uh, concerning um, uh, your question and my uh, opinion, 
you see that changing uh, of uh, width of gauge in Baltic states. First of all, it would be very useful and would be very uh, pleasant for passenger transport. It seems to me that for cargo transport, it wouldn't be so uh, uh, much, uh, for example, uh, profit, much uh, use, uh, usefulness, usefulness, uh, it's not so. But uh, you see uh, the usefulness of this project, first of all, it seems to me that Europe, part of money, gives to these states on this project. You see, anybody, if you receive something, you mustn't lose it. You must take it on the on development of your infrastructure. And it, it seems to me, it is usefulness result of this project. Uh, pay attention, please. You see, for example, in Europe, in Spain and Portugal, they have distinctly another width of gauge. One, uh, one uh, six, six, eight millimeters, you see? It's wider than in Russia and in Europe at all. <laughs> and in, the, in Africa, mostly very uh, narrow. For example, yellow, it is only one meter. You see, one meter, it is uh, narrow, narrow, gauge, uh, narrow gauge railways. Very interesting we picture. We used to have also narrow gauge railway yes. railways yes. on one meter, but well, they are liquidated. Yes. In the beginning of the 19th century. We also have in different enterprises. For example, for local transportation of uh, timber, for example, in different, yes. Because it was much quicker constructing. Well, but still, on the other hand, not far from here, in northern Latvia, in there northern. is still some, I think, 30 kilometers remaining mm. of this narrow gauge railway, but they use it as a tourist attraction more, mm. because it's really very slow. They must organize the ch for children a little. We have such, a, uh, you see, we have now in St. Petersburg two uh, railways for children on the north of our city. And nearly one month ago, it's appeared a railway for children of the south of our uh, city. And all children, they serve the uh, locomotives, they serve uh, railway, they serve uh, stations, such a, but it is narrow, narrow gauge. How well is organized information flow in Russia in supply chain? Uh, what information do you mean? Like uh, AD systems or something. Uh, systems? Yes. yes. Uh, about uh, legislative systems of railway. Maybe, you, you, maybe I, I hope uh, you always mention the AD system. Maybe the AD system. What Mic system? Mi the microphone, please. Huh? Electronic uh, data interchange system. Ah, interchange system. Yes. Ah. Maybe I'll just ask that. Mm -hmm. you, you mean the system of interchange of gauge? Yes. Of gauge. You see, you can change it only on the border. No, no, it was like about the information change, like in supply chain. like uh, Of changing of documents? Yes. Uh, you see, yes, you are right. In 2007, it's appeared agreement between different countries concerning, uh, concerning possibility of transportation by one document from different, uh, between different system, legislative system, it's appeared. But in practice, you see, we have only pilot container trains, block trains, container trains, from Vienna to Kaluga, which carry uh, uh, spare parts for, automot for automobile uh, industry, for assembling the cars in the plants of, uh, of Russia, in Kaluga. It is not far from Moscow. You see, but in uh, general, it is not, uh, till now, is not developed. There are several reasons. One of the reasons, I can say to you, one of the reasons, maybe it's not the most important reason, but one of the reasons, you see that on, uh, on places, uh, very weak uh, knowledge of uh, language, of English, of foreign language, because these documents must be filled and must be read by uh, on foreign language. It's also one of the <laughs> reasons. <coughs> you well, not every day coming somebody and uh, use on real commercial part, even if we are very close to neighbors, but most of students uh, looking between Europe and <laughs> European. I understand. But we have now in Russia a lot of European companies. And my, my students in university are also asking and how, how we can work in, a country, in a companies which are representative of European uh, business and so on. And I say only one answer, study better, 
learn better. <laughs> you're welcome. How many? How many years your students uh, six, uh, five. Ask you see, it is, you see, it, yes, Veika knows better because our systems are nearly close to each other. Uh, you see that there are two uh, levels, bachelor and uh, master, you see. Bachelor, it is four, master, five and a half. But if you so develop and so, it is a possibility to postgraduate and so on. Our university have very good ties with Finland, with Poland, uh, higher education uh, transport uh, universities. And uh, you see now uh, it is discussed uh, possibility to have double diploma. You see, uh, double diploma, Russian and uh, foreign, uh, which is recognized in Europe. Okay. Uh, you mentioned also this uh, European Union uh, sulfur Directive. Sulfur, the, yes. yes. The directive sulfur. Uh, so uh, it seems that from the year uh, 2015, 15. transportation under the flags of the European Union, I mean vessels, yes. ships, yes. will be more expensive. Yes. Uh, do you think it uh, gives Russian, well, ships under Russian flag, more possibilities to take over vessel cargo? Uh, or uh, you mentioned it uh, in the railway, so that there might be more possibilities for railways, thanks to that directive. Yes. But what about uh, Russian vessels? Uh, you see, it seems to me that it would be uh, such a blocking, for example, of vessels under any flag, not only European, who will, uh, who wouldn't... Uh, in tune with these requirements, with this uh, sulfur uh, requirements, with this directive European. That's why it seems to me that it would be difficult for Russian vessels also, especially on the Baltic Sea. You see that Russia is a member of Helcom, yes? And uh, it is, uh, maybe you know, you must know, and students also must know, that Helcom, it is three side triple agreement, triple agreement between Finland, Russia, and Estonia about cleaning, about the taking care, about environmental situation in the Baltic Sea. And there are three centers are created in one of the European projects, due to money of one European uh, project, uh, two, three centers in Finland, in Estonia, and uh, uh, Russia, monitoring the situation with uh, uh, different pollutions in the uh, Baltic Sea and so on. So you see, it seems to me that vessels wouldn't be in, in a big uh, opportunity, <laughs> in a big favor, favor, in a big favor after appearance of this directive. But railway, it seems to me, may be. In, in good uh, position, in good uh, concerning this. So you think that the, the vessels under Russian flag will have the same, similar demands all, with the all, European Union? All, 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 vessels, all, all vessels, vessels moving, yes. All, all vessels, demands. yes. As the yes. European yes. Union. Moving in the waters of Europe. Yeah. You, can't, you can't go in any port, in European yes. port, yes. if you are vessel registered in some Canadian airlines. Yes. You can't go to the Rotterdam or only in the open ocean. <laughs> yes, you can stay somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yes. But for example, Kaliningrad, Ustluga. No, 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 no. no. Okay. So, if you don't have any more questions, or perhaps your teacher has. No. Of course, I have. A lot of questions. Lot of questions. Regarding, <laughs> regarding, <laughs> regarding the local government train project, we have uh, discussed many times. Yes. Uh, but uh, well, but perhaps we there is something that the students should know also. Uh, uh, student must know very much things. Oh, uh, not, not connected or? It is. It's connected. Okay. Uh, of course, students must know very much, but uh, briefly, briefly, I think. Uh, what is maybe most important for our students that uh, if we uh, have a good relations with uh, St. Uh, Railway or State University uh, where you can take a part of the studies, this will be a good uh, challenge for students who know both languages, English and Russian, especially both languages. Then will be 
cooperation between those students very well, I think. Yes. Yes. And therefore, right. it's uh, one, one goal for you. If, even if you don't understand exactly every word here, uh, think about it, about uh, communication skills and skills in, in different languages. Language skills and logistics uh, knowledge is uh, very tightly together. Yes. This is a very important communication part of, of logistics yes. knowledge. You are right, exactly. Therefore, it's, uh, I think these are the main things uh, what I can suggest for the students. Yes. Because the, the logistics knowledge uh, developing always, and not only today and tomorrow, but uh, as we see in the pictures, how, how much um, really the companies and the states are ready to go over uh, to the real uh, knowledge that we can use, uh, efficiency and environment-friendly transportation and, and many questions regarding con con uh, container transportation. Yes. Uh, one, one diagram has shown very well most of the containers standing somewhere, not using. Therefore, it's a lot of... Uh, Environment, environmental aspects, uh, including in this problem, and why thousands, uh, not only students, but mm -hmm. also sure. uh, different sure. research company trying to solve this problem. Who will solve this problem? Probably somebody from here, I think, get a really high Nobel Prize <laughs> who can find solution for yes. this 56%. Yes. Yes. Where the containers can ch change between the countries uh, and... and uh, and areas uh, more smoothly. I think there's a lot of challenges in this uh, area, and therefore it's, uh, uh, have, a, have, a, have a time to learn languages, and, and I think logistics uh, part is a uh, good uh, challenge for you. Veika, thank you very much. You uh, mentioned me. You mentioned me one, one more aspect, which is also very important. You're such a very good speech. Add to me uh, one thing. You see that uh, I've told you that uh, the market of logistics in the world, it's uh, nearly, for example, 15, 15 uh, billion of dollars, yes, of dollars market. And uh, you see it is the mean, uh, meaning, uh, it is the meaning of specialists. It's not exact figure, it's meaning of specialists. It can be them. so in such a diapason can be a little uh, divided spectrum. But it's the meaning of specialists that seven percentage of this money are spended on documents. If you will decrease document flows on one percentage per year, it is per year, market per year, yes? On one percentage per year. You can calculate what profitability you will have, you see? So it's a peer requirement of information technologies, better knowledge of information technologies, better knowledge of how they to implement in logistic operation, in logistic production. Because all information technology, they decrease the volume of documents. Uh, are electronic documents included in this? No. no, 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 it's, no, no, only paper, it's only paper. Different papers, yes, you see, not only, for example, uh, bill of lading, not only bill of ladings, no, no, or on assignments. Well, okay. uh, if there are no more question, questions, as I understood, then uh, we are very grateful for the professor, and perhaps we will have a chance to listen to you in the future even more. Thank you very much. I am, I am ready. So <laughs> give him a very big hand. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.